Greetings and welcome to In-Depth MDK Roster. Now, we have previously held conversations with trained sexologists and sex coach who uses those skills along with a degree in theater arts, minoring in psychology, Onika Henry. Now, she made the time to test some of her academic theories leading up to the point of playing mindful mass. So we're going to be speaking with her about the theory and practice of this process and how she plans to take it forward. Miss Henry, how you do, ma'am? I am fine, thank you. Still in a little bit of the afterglow of playing mass. <laughs> so I'm I'm good. I'm good. And and that's how I want to start, you know. How beautiful is it that you get to mix business with pleasure, work with play, and because I sure there's a lot of people jealous in here right now. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But it, it, it is a wonderful privilege and it is beautiful to have play and work um being almost the same thing. I mean, that was, was the, no, when I heard Spice, initially I started to think Grenada, so what, she was playing mass in Grenada, what's happening? But in terms of the Spice process, what is it? So I'm asking you to define it and give me a rationale for, for you coming up with it first. All right, so let's start with the rationale. I, I have been exploring the application of somatic therapy to mass, to mass playing um, since I did my TEDx Port of Spain talk back in 2019. Um, and the response to that talk was, well, I was truly blown away by how many people could relate to my suggestion or my view that our mass process was a space to reclaim sexual identity, to work through sexuality issues. Um, and so for almost everyone, it seemed as if that the content of that TED talk um, was a way to articulate the experience in Carnival that they did not know how to do before. And so I thought, okay, maybe I can create a step-by-step -step process or specific tips and suggestions um, for anyone who wants to participate in mass, whether as a masquerader or steel fan player or even a spectator, so they could get more out of the festival, they could get more out of the experience. Um, and so I thought about how I experienced Carnival and I thought about what I'm learning or what I learned in somatic um, sex education. And the SPICE acronym stands for, well, the S, set your intention. So what do you want out of the experience? Are you about you know, exploring resistance and rebellion, um, resilience, surrender, joyful acceptance, pleasure, somatic release? So those are some of the intentions you can set um, for participating in mass. And then the P of the I, um, pick an activity for your intention. So find an activity, a, a carnival character, um, a kind of way of interacting or engaging with carnival that matches your intention. How could you experience this intention through many options that are available in our carnival space? And then the C in Spice is commit to learning. So decide, okay, I'm going to be part of a group or whatever, and I'm going to learn the songs, the chants, the movements, whatever are the features of that traditional activity. And the, the E in Spice is for engaging with a group, right? Find, find your people, find your tribe, quote unquote, no pun intended. <laughs> you know, so choose a mass band or a group that you'll be playing mass with. And that's it. Do you find that well, I, I'm, you're speaking and I'm thinking of Albert Einstein saying that plays the highest form of research. Do you think that mm. when people are not focusing on, okay, well, I'm trying to learn that 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 wall becomes a little more accessible between mind and body to help some of these things, these breakthroughs occur? Yes, because I, for, at least for me and what I've observed as a teacher um, and even doing therapeutic work is that when you tell people, well, just explore, just try it out. There's no fear of failure. You know, so if you think you're so if you feel like you're trying to learn and therefore you need to pass and you need to reach a particular standard, that tends to put an additional pressure on folks that constricts them and shuts them down. But if you say play or explore or just have a sense of curiosity and try it out, People are more willing to do that because there, there isn't, I think, the risk of feeling like a feeling like I didn't um, do it right, as opposed to, oh, I discovered something while simply exploring, you know, and playing and having that adventure. So like with my clients, I, I don't say home work, I say home play. So even that begins to, you know, change the framework within which I'm, I'm inviting them to try out these things that are supposed to help improve 
on the health and well-being. And I like that in terms of like that change, that nuanced distinction between homework and home play, because I want to ask how it played out for you on the road. And I say that because it's one thing to say, okay, well, you're doing research and you're asking people about their experience. It's another thing to do it yourself. Uh, but it's also another thing even more to say, okay, well, I'm doing it myself, but I'm not doing it. Saying, okay, well, I have to do it. I have to make sure that I get all these responses. I need to be auditing myself all the time to see how it is a feeling. And it basically kind of lock up. But how was it, how was it on, the, on, on your journey towards playing Mass on the Road? Well, I got totally derailed. <laughs> and by that, what I mean is, so um, the, th the theory works, but I think, not I think, I experienced the mass itself putting me on a completely different path. So Frank, so what I mean by this is that, so I follow the steps, you know, the S, the PI, and when I got to C, commit to learning, when I began to study the character and I'm putting on the, the costume of trying it out, I experienced, well, let me put it this way. I did not know that there were going to be some unresolved issues that I had that unearthed while learning about the character. So there were all these emotions and thoughts that came up that were so overwhelming um, about my own journey um, as a parent. Because this is baby doll. So there's so, you know, there is a there is a history behind that character that has to do with, with childbirth and childbearing and relationships and parenting. And my own issues came up that were completely different from my initial intention. So my intention was I'm going to be part of a, of a protest mass, of a mass that's focusing on highlighting um, equal rights for women and girls. But I got into that mode of learning about the character, the chance, you know, the role and, and putting on the costume of the props and so forth, thing with the props. And my body just went somewhere else. Um, and there are all these physiological and, sens and sens sensations coming out of, of my body. And, and my body was saying, yes, it's that plan that you had, that's not going to work. So I had to start from the beginning and set a new intention. Um, and I'd already picked the activity, which was baby doll. And I'm already committed to learning, but if I didn't change the intention to match what was happening in my body, it wasn't going to go well. It wasn't going to go well. There was a lot of grief that came that I did not expect. Thank you so much for sharing that. But what was the original intention behind saying, okay, well, this is the mass that I want to go with? Oh, so I was having a conversation with Amanda T. McIntyre, who was the band leader for Dolly Mass 2024. I thoroughly enjoyed her work. I have deep respect for her. Uh, and she invited me to play. And I thought, why not? This is a perfect... Um, situation to, to test out, <laughs> you know, this, this theory and this spice process. And when she spoke to me about what the idea was behind the band, I said, oh, I like that, I can get behind that. And in fact, one of the characters in the band, um, Dolima Madre de las Muertos, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, that is a, it was a, is a mourning mass, a commentary on genocide happening in the Gaza. And it was in solidarity with people, people of Palestine. So it was referring to you know, we now have mothers who are grieving children lost to genocide. Um, and so I thought I could get behind this. I could, I could do this. This is something I can um, support. So it just made sense. It made intellectual sense. And uh, it gave me a chance to do my part in terms of protesting what's happening in that part of the world. Um, and then, yeah, my, 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 my body had other, other ideas and other priorities. And that reminds me of the, the love we 40 days before the carnival tell them rap, rope man or them jab jab or them guaman to start the ritual. And just in terms of like that setting, and you you mentioned the word a few times, setting intention, preparing your body, preparing your spirit, making sure that you're in the place that you're supposed to be. I'm able, I'm, I'm grateful that you had the tools to be able to say, okay, well, this is what is happening. And this is how I need to, this is how I need to pivot to to deal with yeah. what i'm experiencing at this point in time but i think we're actually going to take a little pivot now we're going to take a short break and return looking at the spice process and see how it is we're going to be carrying how, how it is you're going to be carrying it forward stay tuned we are speaking with a sexologist and sex coach onika henry we come back with more
welcome back. We are speaking with Onika Henry about the spice process. Is this a module? Is it a process? What 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 do you put on the <laughs> end at after after the word spice, Onika? Oh my gosh! So it's still a work in progress. It is still in some kind of transition, um, and the specificity of it came out of my training to become certified as a somatic sex educator, and I was looking at the application of somatic methods to playing masks, to, to our carnival, carnival space. Um, and so it was during that process of creating um, tools, methods that apply directly into a carnival, carnival process that I came up with the, with the acronym. And it is linked to a course that I'm designing. Well, I'm, say, I'm saying I'm designing now because it seems that people are so interested in it that I have to do it now. I didn't plan to, you know, it was just supposed to be, I'm submitting this for consideration. This is a theory that somebody could work with. But I have developed a nine week course, eight weeks of which focuses on the theory of dealing with um, trauma of sexual wholeness and wellness, learning the tools that help to promote sexual wholeness and wellness. And the ninth week of that course is, is intended to be done in the carnival space at a mass camp where the participants of the students are creating their mass and they're going to be on the road with other folks. Um, so what's left now is for me to actually design the eight week course, the, the content, the PowerPoints, <laughs> the PowerPoint presentations, the exercises and tools that I'm gonna to be teaching students. And they will be of course practicing those tools on, those, on their own for those eight weeks. But that ninth week, the intention is, okay, so now let's put into practice what we've learned. And it's a combination of creating a kind of a practice. I'm, I'm focusing more on traditional kind of a practice because they seem to have so much, of, so many stories, so many ways that you can play them. Um, and they'll be creating these kind of a practice and putting themselves in it and using these characters and the space to continue the process of, of healing and overcoming sexual issues and sexual trauma. So that is, that is the intention. Intention, that word again. No, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but when you say somatic, you're talking about linkages between the mind and body. So you'll 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 give me that yes or no while also speaking to the potential significance or the significance, the impact of applying this kind of academic rigor to <laughs> traditional practices, to cultural practices. Thanks. Right. So it's interesting that word somatic. So when I use the word somatic, and this is based on how I'm trained, I'm talking about or referring to the body in its entirety. And the body includes the brain. The distinction between brain and mind is a whole different discussion <laughs> for a whole different other, for a whole other time. Um, so when I think of somatics of the entire body, including the brain, I'm thinking about the ways in which our nervous system gives us information and is picking up on what's happening in the environment that the mind can't or the brain can't. So there's an entire system, including the brain, um, that we are working with when we talk about somatics. And it is that connection that showed up in my playing of this of this character. Because I mean my my body was giving me a whole lot of um, different intentions compared to what my mind was saying I needed to do, that I, this, you know, this, I was going to protest. And my body got into the space of the mass and I was like, no, 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 that's not a priority. And so outside of that, when I'm thinking about how I applied my academic training, if you want to call it that, to, to mass, I think what the academics does is that it gives cr more credibility to the process and cultural practices. Because that quote unquote scientific method where you need to be precise, you need to track what's happening, make sure that you are linking one particular sensation to a particular experience or particular outcome. Being able to track that, to document that and have it reproduced or experienced by someone else, for me, gives the practice some credibility. And I think it allows more people to have more access to what they can do within that carnival space. That's, that's how I'm seeing that. And I'm happy to be corrected about that in terms of, you know, academic rigor and cultural practices. But that's how, that's how I experienced it. Because coming out of that quote-unquote rigor and that documentation and that tracking came this SPICE acronym. 
And out of that came the creation of this course as a very, um, what's the word? Systematic, I think I used the right word there. Yes, systematic, the very systematic, one, the course after builds on the one before and the one after builds on the other two. And so there is a progress that you can track and tell whether, okay, I'm, I am, I'm making improvements here. I can see where I'm going. Um, so that's how I see it. I hope that answered your questions, yeah. It does. And I think one other thing is that it just opens or provides a level of access uh, for people who are used to one method of thinking, okay, it, it has to be like this, otherwise it don't make sense. You know, sometimes people just want a piece of paper or certification, but it still brings yeah. them and helps them engage with practices that have gone on. So it's no no longer a matter of, hey, what are you doing that? Hey, hey, okay, well, I see them on the TV, but it gives an idea of a lot of the things that are taking place before. And it carries me back to... Will Loveless asking the question, what will we do with what we have done? And I want to ask, what, from your perspective, what can we learn from some of these things that we've been doing? Yeah. So what I have come to recognize is that we have some really powerful resources within our cultural spaces that can be used for educational and therapeutic intentions or interventions, as well as for social and behavior change. I would have recognized too, is that even if someone is on a personal or individual journey that they are trying to come to terms with or part of which is happening in that carnival space, they are doing that within a group or the community. And so there's a sense of being held with care and safety. So you're, you're on your own, but you're not by yourself. And what we've learned over the last few years in the, in the scientific community is that healing and well-being takes place faster, better, in an easier way when it happens in a group and community setting of like-minded individuals. And that carnival space is exactly that, especially if you choose the people who you want to be in your space. So they're not interfering with your journey, but they're the support. They're saying, well, you know, if, if, it, comes, if it gets too much, you can rest or we're picking up something, we're seeing something happening in your body, can you recognize that? Because they may not recognize it themselves. And so being in that group setting of like-minded individuals, of folks who have gone through the journey before you makes your own journey and your own, your own healing and your own learning process so much richer and so much better. And there's lots of support within the health and wholeness industry or field that supports healing and learning in that group and community setting. And we have it here, complete with uh, what I would call a ritualistic, um, joyful community practice. This is a community joy practice. It's a community erotic practice. And there is a way in which we have discovered that pleasure is medicine, pleasure is healing. And imagine if we also put on top the fact that it's quite possible that many of these practices, these traditions, uh, these rituals have been, have come about as a response to help with healing in the first place. So it's not as though yeah. it's just like, eh, eh, it helped me. No, I think that was part of the design in the first place. But in terms of like looking at the time we have, we, had about, we have about a minute and a half. And you said, yes, it's almost as though people kind of, I, I don't want to say pressure you, but encouraged you into Encouraged. creating these 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 nine weeks and looking at how it is going to be what is your intention <laughs> for the project in terms of like people coming out of it what do you hope that people engaging with this course of study will come away with right um, and so the course literally in its in this title includes sexual healing so it's specifically focused towards or geared towards folks who are having an issue with integrating their sexuality into their, into their daily lives. It is for folks who are recovering from some kind of sexual trauma. Uh, it's for folks who feel disconnected from their sexuality. And so the idea is that over the nine weeks, they begin to understand where this came from. How do I respond when my body begins to react badly to particular cues or stimuli in the environment? How do I manage that? How do I deal with that? How do I reach out for help from other folks? Um, and so there are specific body-based skills they'll be learning. There'll be specific ways that they're going to learn how to communicate with their loved ones so that they have support 
um, through all their healing. And then it is also going to include ways of releasing trauma that's stuck in the tissue, that's stuck in the body. And so the movement, um, using music, using sound, using artwork, are many different ways in which you get to release trauma that's stored or trapped in the body and in, and in the tissues. So trauma release, um, becoming, bef befriending the body, learning skills to cope with when you are triggered and learning to have skills to better negotiate what you want out of a relationship and interaction. Anonika Henry, my sincere wish for anyone taking in this conversation is that there's the going there are going to be these individuals who say, you know, I thought it was just me who feel that way, that these things help. And they realize, no, it's not just you. There is science behind it, whether or not you consider it academic science or spirit science, energetical science. But we really want to thank you for the work that you're doing and continuing to do. And we're looking for big things coming from it. And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, this has been In Depth with me, DK Ronstadt. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.